I feel like as women, we are on this lifelong mission to find fabulous makeup products, and there's so many options out there. We need it to make us look good. We need it to not break the bank. We need it to have fabulous consistency, not break out our skin. Like there's so many factors that go into that. And I'm so happy that I found Shine Makeup earlier this year because it gives me all the things that I need. It doesn't break the bank. The consistency is my favorite out of any makeup that I've ever tried. The people behind Shine Makeup are absolutely amazing, but I will say the best part about Shine Makeup is I know that everybody that I share it with is going to love it just as much as I do. Hi everyone and welcome to I Am Mom Summit or welcome back if you've been watching some of the sessions already. I'm Courtney Rich from Cake by Courtney and I've put my cake tools away for this session and we're gonna talk a little bit about building your brand on social media. Before I get to that though, I thought I'd give you a little bit of my background, especially for those of you who don't know me. I actually, my background is in broadcast journalism and I graduated college 12 and a half years ago uh, in broadcast journalism from BYU. And I started working at a television station right away and also started working for a consulting company right off the bat. And I love that and that's where I really have put my focus the last 12 years. And with the consulting company, it's all media based. Um, and I work mostly with different media companies on television shows, websites, sometimes apps, also branding and advertising. And I have freelanced in media consulting for the last nine years since Weston was born and go around the country now and moderate focus groups for new television shows before they air or don't air because a lot of them aren't very good and they never even make it to TV. But I'm going around and I'm testing those and interviewing um, the consumers and the viewers about what they think about those. And I've loved it and it's been so much fun. But looking back um, to when I was graduating and had high hopes of being uh, a producer at a television station and then high hopes of being a top talent consultant. I had no <laughs> perspective of cake blogging in my view. It was nothing um, that I had been thinking of back then. But as I look back to my experiences and the things that I've been doing up until Cake by Courtney, it all has kind of come together in a really neat way and that background has helped with Cake by Courtney and as I've started building this brand. Um, but it, it's never something that just happens overnight. And let me give you a little background uh, and kind of how Cake by Courtney came to be, even though I was doing all this other stuff in media and starting to raise two kids. Um, like many of you, I grew up baking with my mom and my sister, my family, being in the kitchen, um, making things like cookies and brownies and box mix cakes. Shh, I used to do that. I grew up on those, didn't most of us? Anyway, uh, just loving being in the kitchen, but I never really appreciated and loved food the way that I do now. But when my son, Weston, who's now nine, was turning one, I, <laughs> out of pure intimidation, decided to make my first cake from scratch. And I say out of intimidation it is because we were in Santa Monica at the time and living close to my in-laws who are really, really, really good cooks and my parents and other friends. And I felt like there was just no way I could make a cake from a box mix. And so I grabbed a Bon Appetit, which I think was the only magazine I ever saw in my in-laws kitchen. So I figured if it came from that, it was gonna be a good cake. And it was, it was delicious. Did it look good? No, I didn't know how to level a cake. It was domed. I didn't know about a crumb coat. I was just going for it. And when I tasted that cake, it was so good. It was literally life-changing. I never grabbed another box mix again, and I just kind of got this obsession over finding great cake recipes and delicious cakes and wanted to just find the best of the best. And at that time, too, we were living in Santa Monica. There's all this great food. And with our jobs, um, Ryan and I were eating out at really awesome restaurants and just experiencing food in a new way. And so I was starting to appreciate food in a way I never had before and just really just enjoying it and then this cake obsession <laughs> crept up on me and I was having so much fun just teaching myself how to make cakes and not even worrying about what they looked like. It was all about how they tasted and it was such a fun, enjoyable experience for me to create something that tasted so amazing that I just kept doing it and kept doing it. And it really wasn't until um, we moved here to Utah about three years ago that people started encouraging me and saying, you know, you've got to share this with people and give them all these great recipes. But I was hesitant. Um, I knew that the 
market for food blogs was greatly saturated. And obviously, like many of us do, I was comparing myself to other people out there and just thinking, oh, I'm not sure I can do things that they're doing or the way that they're doing. And I had a lot of doubts. But then I started thinking about my time in consulting and testing hundreds of television shows and talking to thousands of viewers around the country. And over, let's see, in over a decade of television consulting and testing these different shows, I've never had a viewer tell me in a focus group, you know what, Ugh, there's just, there's too much TV out there I don't need anymore. There's always room for good new content. I mean, cause you think about it, people are going to television to escape, to live vicariously through other people, to, to learn something new, to feel inspired. And they're going to blogs for the same reason, whether it's a food blog or a travel blog or a fashion blog, or they're scrolling through Instagram on those types of accounts. They're going to those to escape from reality for a moment. Sometimes it's just this mindless entertainment just to scroll and, and look at pretty things or yummy food. Um, but also we're going to these blogs and we're going to Instagram to learn something new, to be inspired, hopefully inspired enough to actually take action on something. Sometimes we just wanna live vicariously through other people who get to make the yummy food or eat the yummy food or travel to really cool places or to wear a really gorgeous outfit. Um, people, I, you know, I started thinking about it, that the blogs wasn't much different than TV. And if there's good content, it rises to the top and people are gonna make room for it. No matter how busy they are or how many blogs they're already following, people make room for good content. At that point, once I kind of gave myself the confidence to uh, to put myself out there, I started Cake by Courtney with just like Blogspot, my pictures from my, my cell phone, um, and have just been teaching myself along the way. And hopefully some of the things that I learned through trial and error will help you as you get started or as you're working on building your brand as well. All right, so. First things first, define your brand and define your audience. So before posting a single picture, really before getting started, you've got to ask yourself a couple questions. What's your purpose? What's your goal? What, what are you trying to achieve with whatever kind of blog or social media account that you're putting out there? For me, I knew that the marketplace for food and dessert blogs, it was really crowded and I knew I needed to differentiate myself from other people in some way. So for me, when I set out, I decided not only did I want to share my recipes with other people and share awesome cakes and really yummy things that looked good, I wanted to teach them how to do it on their own so that they felt confident to go into the kitchen, to get all their supplies and ingredients out and make a cake from scratch. And then to decorate it and to get to that process. So little by little, learning how to bake, feeling confident in the kitchen, and then learning to decorate and taking the guesswork out for them. I also knew that I needed to be part of my brand because I wanted people to really trust me and feel like I was their friend. It's so fun when I'm doing a cake class and somebody comes in and says, can I hug you? I just, I feel like we're friends. And I, I hug them so big and hard because that's like exactly what I had set out to do. And if it's only just one person that feels that way, awesome, because that's what I wanted to achieve. I wanted um, my blog and my Instagram to connect me to my followers and my... So you define your brand and you also want to define your audience. In television, at the stations, they often use a tactic called one-on-one -on -one marketing to create their content and to target their viewers. So for example, a station in Salt Lake City might say their target viewer is a 45-year-old mom who is working, she has three kids, et cetera, et cetera. This helps the station uh, create content for that viewer, but it really hits everyone in that demographic, but it gives them some focus. Um, we do the same thing with talent consulting and, and talent coaching, um, especially for anchors and reporters. They're taught to connect with that one person that they're looking to in the camera. And through that connection with the one person, they're really connecting to all their viewers, but they are focusing on the one person. And so when you're creating your content for your blog, and for Instagram, and you're writing, think about who you're trying to talk to. Think of the one person that you're trying to connect with and write for them. And then that content and that connection, it crosses over 
into everyone in that demographic, hopefully it should, and trickles over into other demographics as well. But if you know who your target audience is, you can really talk to them and create a connection with them. So define your brand, define your audience. All right, number two, invest in yourself and invest in your brand. Something I really regret not doing early on. I, I think I still was like a little hesitant, maybe just lacked some confidence. And so I started out with Blogspot and just pictures from my phone, which was great. I got started, I was doing it. Um, but I think had I done a little bit more research on building like a really appropriate website, um, a functional website with more usability functions, had I taught myself a little bit more about how to take really good pictures with even just a phone, um, I could have come out of the gate a little bit stronger. Since starting Cake by Courtney a couple years ago, I've changed my website twice. So I went from Blogspot to Wix and then I had someone build me a website that I paid for. Um, I've also figured out the picture thing, I think a little bit better. I taught myself how to take better pictures on my phone. I got myself a camera that I could use. Um, I learned how important natural lighting was to my pictures and just started doing a little bit more research after that first year on really how to invest in myself and invest in my pictures and my website and my brand. And I just, I think that's one of my biggest regrets is that I didn't do that a little earlier on. My, my first year of vlogging was good and I had some, some nice growth, but it wasn't really until the second year when I was putting more of my time, um, a little bit more of my money, um, my energy into my brand that I saw the biggest growth and the biggest changes. I mean, I think I tripled my numbers on Instagram and doubled my numbers on my website. And I know it was because I was spending more time um, researching and working and writing and getting good quality things um, and good quality content up on my social media pages that really made a huge difference. And I've started using a photographer here and there um, in creating content that I think is just um, a little bit more powerful and, and stronger um, as people start to look at it. And so, I mean, I think that investment of time and energy and maybe sacrificing a little bit of sleep to fit it in, especially when you've got so much other stuff going on, if you've got kids or another job, um, you have to make a few sacrifices, but it's worth the investment. And I feel like when we're working really hard for something we love, that's a passion and it feels worth it, right? It's when we're working hard for something we don't love that it's work. And if it's your passion, it's worth investing in if you love doing it if this is what you want to do and you love it so much invest in it invest in yourself give yourself the benefit of the doubt put a little bit more time energy a little bit of money towards it at the beginning um, to come out of the gate a little bit stronger number three find your voice and by that i mean find your voice in your pictures and in your writing and all the content that you're producing for social media it should have your voice behind it. Um, somebody who doesn't even know or maybe didn't see your name on the post should know that that picture or that writing, it came from you. And though they've never met you, should feel like they know you. Because your voice doesn't just define you as a blogger, it's what connects you to your audience, which is so important because really it's more about the connection with your audience and increasing engagement with your audience than it is about how many followers you have. Uh, you guys probably know this, but in case some of you don't, Instagram's algorithm, when you post something, um, it's important to post during high peak hours for your followers and when they're gonna be on there. But Instagram at that time when you post, they only send your post out to a certain percentage of your followers. And as those followers react or don't react to your post, Instagram takes note of that. So you're hoping that they engage in your post, that they like it, that they comment on it, maybe they share it. Instagram's taking all that information and then using it to decide if it's going to share that post more or less. So if you get high engagement within that first little bit of Instagram posting and sharing with the percentage of your followers, then more of your followers get to see that picture. And then also your post gets higher on the explore page and new people get to see your post. But that's all about the engagement within the first little bit and within that small percentage of your followers that see it at the very beginning. So that's why it's so important to have a voice that you're connecting with your audience, 
so that they're gonna engage and talk to you and like what you're doing. And we'll talk about quality um, as well, but it's the quality of your content too that will help to increase that engagement and, and give you some reach and some growth. Okay, number four, consistency. And I love this quote, you guys have heard it. Success doesn't come from what we do occasionally, it comes from what we do consistently. And it couldn't be more true. Um, I've seen it in the last couple of years, but I wanna give you an analogy from the TV stations again, because I think they do it right. Whenever a station is really trying to increase awareness and work on their branding, um, they often will do like taglines and all of their uh, little TV spots and advertisements. But one of the other things they do in their news hour is they'll do something like traffic on the fours if it's for channel four or weather on the fives if it's for channel five. But what they're trying to do is for the viewer at home who's listening, all of a sudden it just becomes this routine. And that viewer can expect, I'll always have weather on the fours. If it's 304 or 314, 324, like they know they could tune into the news and that's when they're gonna get their weather. And with that consistency, they're creating dependability and trustworthiness and building their brand at the same time. And I feel like with social media, it's kind of the same thing. We don't need to post as much as a news station is doing traffic and weather, but it's the consistency. And for me, I, I usually post once a day, sometimes two if I feel like it adds real value, but at least once and it's usually in the morning. I like the morning because then I get that out there, um, people have come to expect it from me in the morning. If I don't post in the morning, sometimes I'll get comments like, I missed my cake this morning, or where was my cake in bed? Um, but people can depend on that, and they know when they're gonna hear from me, and maybe they hopefully look forward to hearing from me right when they wake up in the morning or in the evening, if that's my other time of posting. But they start to depend and trust that they can count on me during those times. Now, I, I think posting every day is great in a consistent form as well, but I don't think you should do that but and risk um, your quality. So if you don't have something really valuable to post, don't post, it's okay, it doesn't need to happen every single day if it's not gonna be quality, if it's not going to give your viewers, your audience, the value that they're looking for. So keep that in mind too. Um, I think really your consistency comes in your style of post, your voice, um, a little bit with the timing as well, but doesn't necessarily have to be every single day. Again, I think, think about your content, make sure that's consistently good versus just posting consistently just to have a post up. Number five, surround yourself with people who know more than you. <laughs> this one, there's just always more to learn and you can do the research, but it's so great to actually talk to people and hear their experiences and make relationships with people who have been blogging, who have done this longer than you, who have experience, who can help you, who are willing to help you. Um, when I first started, a couple months after I had started Cake by Courtney, I reached out to Brooke from Female Foodie. And I had been following her and I just loved her style and felt like what she was doing was so smart and so on brand for her. And just someone I felt like I could learn from, hopefully grow my account from as well. Um, so I reached out to her in hopes of doing a, a collaboration and we did and it was really fun and we've become good friends and have done several things since then. But at our first dinner together, we started talking and I was trying to pick her brain and, and just learn from her and she was so willing to share this wealth of knowledge she had with me and I was just trying to soak it all in and I learned so much from her in that one hour than I had in months of blogging and doing some research, but taking her experiences and learning from her, you know, um, successes or stuff that she didn't do as well, uh, really added a lot of value to what I was doing moving forward. And that was a great relationship for me, um, just because I learned so much from her and I continue to learn so much from her. Uh, another one, her mom actually, Cy Foster from A Bountiful Kitchen, reached out to me last year um, kind of at the end of my first year going into my second year and asked um, if I would do a collaboration with her where I would teach her how to make a cake and she could share that with her followers on Instagram. And that made sense for her because people had asked her to show um, them how to make a cake and decorate. And she reached out to me to help her with that. But I mean, I feel like I got way more out of that partnership than she did because again, she was someone who knew 
and knows so much more than me. And as we sat there for a couple hours and we made cake and we ate and we talked, I was just learning so much from her and she was so willing to share information with me and help me and give me advice. And I just, I wish I had like recorded the whole thing, but it was so valuable to me to just sit there and learn from someone who knew more than me. And again, I left that collaboration feeling like I left out way more than she did. And I knowing so much more than I did going into that. And even after a year and a half of blogging, um, even the next day she called me and just encouraged me even more to just invest more in myself and in my brand and what I was doing and went out of her way to give me more advice. And it just made me realize like you really need to invest in yourself enough that makes other people want to invest in you because all of a sudden then you get to share this knowledge and they'll share their experiences with you and you get these cool collaborations um, that you're going to learn from, that you'll grow from. But I mean, as much as you can, whether you're actually having one-on-one -on -one conversations with people who can help you grow and give you more knowledge, or maybe they're just people you're following on Instagram, but they should be the people that inspire you, that are teaching you in some way. Um, but just make sure those kind of people, the ones you're reaching out to, uh, they know more than you because there's so much you can learn from people who have been doing this uh, longer than you have. So don't be afraid to reach out to other people ask for advice. You may get it, you may not get it. Just keep asking because there's so much you can learn from other people's experiences um, and years in doing this. So that leads me into the next one, which is smart and thoughtful partnerships. Now, I think collaborations are great. Um, I think giveaways are fun. I don't think they do as much for you in creating really engaged followers. I think the collaborations make more sense when you're doing something together. Like Sai and I made cake together. That made sense for me because it was cake. Made sense for her because she's a food blogger and her followers had asked for that specifically. Um, and so it really worked out, but, and it made sense for both of our brands. So I think you need to be aware of, again, what are you trying to achieve with your brand? What's your goal? And then when you start to consider collaborations, Think about that and will that collaboration help your brand? Will it help you achieve your goal? Um, and be thinking about those things. You do sometimes just have to say no to people because it doesn't make sense or it's not quite worth your time. Um, but just be thoughtful about those collaborations and the partnerships that you take on because also your audience, they're smart. They know when something feels forced and they know when something feels more organic. So look for those more organic, um, natural collaborations versus ones that are a little bit forced and don't make as much sense. Number six, quality over quantity. I know you guys are familiar with this one. You probably already know it, but let me just re-emphasize the importance of quality content. Remember, your engagement is coming um, just within the first little bit of Instagram posting your post and sharing it with your followers. You want to grab their attention right away. And we're such visual people now with all the pictures on social media that as they're scrolling through, you want to capture their attention with a great quality picture. And people are going to judge it right away. One, based on how great it looks. And then two, after they look at the visual element, they'll look at the content. And if it's inspiring or entertaining, insightful, cute, um, something that adds value to them, then they're gonna to start to engage. They'll start to like it and comment and your engagement increases and then you go higher um, in the algorithm with Instagram and you get ranked higher and you get shown to more people. But it starts with the quality. That's what's gonna grab attention from your audience. And so spend the time creating good quality content and pictures. So that natural light, you don't always need a really great camera for that. You need good lighting, I think first and foremost, and, and be thoughtful on how you take your pictures and why you're taking the picture and then the content that you're writing to go along with it. Don't post just to post. Again, with that consistency, it's better to skip a day or two and then come out of the gate with really great content that will capture their attention. Um, Cause really, as you're creating your content, you should be thinking about posting something that's gonna add value to your audience rather than something that's gonna to try to get value out of them. Okay, a couple more before we finish up. Number seven, continue to learn. Yes, keep um, surrounding yourself with people who know more than you, but also do some research on your own. I like to spend like an hour a week just 
researching what trends are changing with Instagram, with different social media platforms, uh, and trying to stay ahead of the curve of what's changing in the industry. Um, and just what I need to know, there's always articles being put out about how to grow your business, how to grow your social media. So just stay up on that, spend some time doing a little bit of research. There's always something to learn and to grow from. Right, last one, stay focused. I'm gonna take you down memory lane for a minute, so just bear with me for just a second as we talk about my high school basketball career. It was kind of short-lived, but there was a moment there that my dad, I think, thought he was gonna create a star athlete, and he bought me these dribbling goggles, and it was this band that wrapped around my head, uh, had like a duck beak kind of thing that went over my nose and protruded out just enough so that I couldn't look down at my hand when I was dribbling. And the purpose was to help strengthen my dribbling. So I was always looking up at the basket uh, and not getting distracted by my hand and what that was doing with the ball. Um, and I could better clear, clearly see the basket and I could see my defenders. And um, there's been a lot of times where I have gotten distracted with social media as I've compared myself to other people who seemingly look like they're doing the same thing as me. And I've compared myself to what they're doing. And if I had those goggles on, which I try to wear them all the time <laughs> um, in my mind, uh, it helps to drown out the noise a little bit. And you can stay focused on what's ahead of you and the goal that you set. There's so much noise on social media. And if you're not careful, you kind of just go down the spiral of comparing yourself to other people. But you don't know what their goal is. But I can tell you, it's different than what you're setting out to do. And as I've stayed focused, I have been stronger personally, mentally, spiritually, um, but my social media game too has been stronger when I've been able to stay focused on my goal and not compare myself as much. Because that's when you start to just post to post and you feel like you need to have more content out there um, and you lose sight of your connection and your voice and your quality. So stay focused, keep your head up and you guys are gonna do great things. I really hope that what I've said today will help you. Let me just review real quick. We wanted to find your brand, find your voice, invest in yourself, be consistent, choose your friends wisely, pick smart collaborations, quality over quantity, keep learning, keep seeking out information, and focus on what you are doing and not what other people are doing. Stay focused. Um, you guys, thanks so much for tuning in and listening to me again or for the first time. This was so great. You can reach me at hello at cakebycourtney.com if you have any other questions. Reach out to me on Instagram. And thanks again, you guys. Bye.